How are you guys doing? Everybody enjoy the summer? It's been hot, right? <laughs> Let's pray that God continues talking with us. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for, for today, Jesus. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't have to worry, I worry about yesterday. And if I have to worry about it, maybe if I would say wor worry, I just need to rest that today is the day. And yesterday that had passed, and I know by your grace alone, we are forgiven. And we thank you for your amazing grace that there is not that I can add on this. I just open my heart and I just let you work and I just let you do your job. And I thank you for this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. The title of our message today is Free of Myself. And I think it always that is something that tries to make me understand or make me think that I can do something. Or oh, the wisdom or the knowledge that I have about something, that's going to help me out. And I think always when you try help, actually we are, tr we are telling Jesus, Jesus, I know what I can do it. And we see in this world today, since they don't want to follow Jesus anymore, now they want to follow what they think it's okay. They want to follow what they think it's going to be better. And uh, I have a, a, a little story that tells that a, a big, you know, the guy paint a frame. He was a very famous painter. And uh, he said, on that day, that time, that place, I may finish a frame, I may, you know, I'm drawing, and I want to everyone go to that place, and I will show you what I, what I did, how my paint is, what I draw. And uh, that day came up. And we have a lot of reporters, we have a lot of people, you know, with pictures, they wanna see what that guy did. And eventually they took that cloth on top of the frame and everybody was seeing that image wow beautiful you know the you know when you go buy a art you i don't know for me some sometimes i see a, a, a art look like someone took the paint and like poof, poof, and then we see people oh wow look the lines <laughs> Look the line, I say, oh, really? But anyways, but the drawing was beautiful. And everybody was like, wow, woo, sharing and everything. And uh, you know, after everybody leave, one guy came and talked to this painter and say, hey, it's beautiful what you did. But I think I found something wrong. Oh, really, did you find anything wrong? Yeah, tell me. I wanna, you, you know, I, I always like advices and everything. And then he said to him, the image was a, a man with a beautiful faith, a beautiful, beautiful face, you know, old man, the white hairs and everything. And there is one house, and the, the, the picture was showing the house and the door. And this old man, he was at the door. And by the face, seems like he wants to go in that house. You know, shows the front of the house, a door. And seems like he was like, you know, knocking or something. Like, he wants to go in. But uh, this guy found something missing. He said, you know, you forgot to put the handle 
on the doors. The handle is missing. You see the face of that old man. You know, he's nice looking. And he seems peaceful. He seems somebody like, it's so good to look your picture. But uh, you didn't put the handle of the door. How that old man, how that man is going to go inside of that door if you miss it, this? There is no way. And this, this guy, you know, the one who did the, the image, he said, you, you know, it's beautiful what you just said because it's a purpose. There is no hand on that door. I will tell you what this image is. This old man, his name is Jesus Christ. This door represents the door of my and your heart. And there is only one way that door can be opened. It's by inside. And inside has the key and has the handle. Or ever you decide to open from inside, this man called Jesus is going to go in and it's going to be with you. And it's going to help you. It's going to tell you now what you need to do. And that's sometimes how we... We try to, because we always think that we know everything, right? And we shut the door for Jesus. The world today is shutting the door. It's closed. Who is knocking? It's me. I want to go inside. No, go out. I know I can take care of my life. I can take care of myself. And uh, always something trying to make us to stop that Jesus can come inside and work in our life. So we have the next, uh, I will ask Brandon to, to read for me in Mark chapter 9 and verse 7, please. Yep. This is my son whom I love, listen to him. This was on transfiguration when Jesus, you know, was with, appears with uh, um, Moses and Elijah. And uh, Peter actually said to, to, to Jesus, Moses, Elijah, say, hey, let's do a tent. And uh, when he was trying to find a place for, you know, for those with Jesus in the earth, a voice came from the heaven and said, this is my son who I love. Listen to him. And that's the word for me and for you today. The devil is trying to tell us what we need to do. But who are we listening to? The Bible, as we see Mark 9 and 7, saying, listen to my son. Listen to my loved son. The next one, look at, uh, read for me in the next verse. It's going to be uh, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So, you see how beautiful it is? We always have the way, you know, I, I already planned my day. I already planned my future. I think it's, everything is going to work well. But uh, Isaiah said, his thought, it's higher than your thoughts and my thoughts. His ways it's even higher. If you think, you, you know, like as a father and a mother, they, you know, they have the good ways for the kids. Imagine God who knows you before you were born. When you were in your mom's room, he already was, you know, he was writing about you every moment of your life. He knew it before you were born. What about us to tell Jesus and listen to him? Sometimes we don't want to. Sometimes we are so busy. Uh, I was talking to a, uh, you know, someone this, this week. And I, I, say to them, I say to this person this. And this can be for us too. You know, we have kids, right? Um, we're taking care of our kids. You know, in my house, I have now five years old, James. Uh, David's going to be seven. And my daughter, beautiful. My beautiful daughter. My only one daughter, Camille. 
She's so cute. You want to come up here? No? I don't know. So anyways. So when you're in a house with kids, if it's too quiet, something's happening. It's too quiet, right? So I don't think we can be with our kids maybe two minutes. I would, do, I would say two minutes without to know where the child is. So if you're in a house, if I know they are in the living room, I say, okay, Camille is there, so they are there. I, I mean, and then we like rest a little bit. But uh, if you go to the market, if you go in a park, if you go in somewhere, it's 100% of your time you're going to be looking to your child. Yes or no? Yes. My question is, how many times does your child come and look to you, worry about you, uh, know if you, mommy, did you eat? Mommy, uh, I'm taking care of you. Can, can, can somebody tell me how many times did, did the, do the child come to ask about it? They come. I will tell when. Now they come and say, Daddy, I want to pee. Okay. Daddy, look at the song. Ding, 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 ding. Ice cream truck. Daddy, I want to buy the ice cream truck. And then they come. Right? Uh, what else? When they, when they fall. <laughs> I felt. Oh, you know, and then they come. They come. But when they come to the father, Way that way they need something. There is something different with us and God, by the way. Hmm. I think we are the same. The Father is always at the door. Too busy for me, right? Okay, I'm still here. I will be waiting for you. I don't give up of you because I died for you. And I know even if you don't look for me now, I know you you come to me because I died for you. <laughs> and our kids, they never come. But when they need, as us sometimes, maybe not here, maybe in Brazil. The Brazilians is like this. I see like in Rio where I live, you know, where I'm, I'm born. In Rio de Janeiro, it's like this. You know, a lot of people, they come to Jesus when they are in need about something. And, uh, you know, on the Brazilian service, I put a table. And I put a table with food. And I told the Brazilians this. I said, you guys come to the United States, in the United States thinking that you're coming to work to make money. God is fishing you. How, uh, it's fishing, right? When you put something in a... Whoosh, come. Whoosh. I'm in the United States. I'm working. I have a job. And then someone go in you and say, Hey, you want to come to my church? You want to... Yeah, come. And they, they come. And then they, we have a table with food. And then we eat. It's not because they're hungry. You know, we have like a, just a taste. We taste some crackers, juice, coffee, whatever. And I say to them this. Now you guys are coming to God because you are hungry about something. And then we come. But there will be one day that you will not, you know, worry about the food on the table. You just want to have Jesus. And then you realize that Jesus... I don't want, I don't worry about if I have food. I don't want if I have work. I'm not worried about what I have. But I cannot be more without your presence in my life. I cannot go anywhere without your presence in my life. Because now I love you. I love you because I know that I, you know, I, now I realize that you are worried about me. You are taking care of me. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do the way that I think is good. I want you to choose for me my ways. Do in the earth as in heaven, as a heaven, right? That's the Father's prayer. Do in the earth as you did in heaven. So whatever you wrote in your book, God, 
I want you to do all my ways here in the earth. So I want to talk a little bit about Lazarus. Um, Lazarus and, you know, the two sisters, Mary and Martha. So I'm going to, you know, you can go yeah, read um, John 11, 20, por favor. Martha, therefore, when she heard Jesus, excuse me, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary still sat in the house. I'm going to make a little understand of the story. You know, Jesus was a friend of Lazarus. And Lazarus, you know, Jesus loves him, the family and everything. Actually, the season four of The Chosen just came out. And uh, we're going to have Lazarus resurrection on this season. You know, I didn't see yet, but I, I can't wait to see. I think it's going to be good. And uh, Martha, we're going to, we're probably going to see. Martha, it's more like worry about things. She's kind of like, a, if I could say today, she's a Christian, but she's still anxiety about stuff. She's worried about stuff. So what happened is Lazarus, her brother, was sick. He was sick. And then she sent, you know, they sent a message to Jesus and said, Jesus, the one who you loved, it's sick. So I'm telling you, is the one who you loved. Come on. If you don't come, it's, you don't love him. You know, please, the one, and you know, I always look like when he puts something like, God, I need you help me on this because I mean, I'm doing your stuff. I'm doing the way you like, you know, you, you, you should do it the way I'm, you know, to everything you need to be working well for me. And uh, as we're going to see, Lazarus died. And now... Jesus knew it. Jesus is going to talk to the disciples. Uh, uh, Lazarus died. He's dead. And uh, why are you still going there? No, he's sleeping. He's going to resurrect it. And you're gonna, God, Jesus did that on a purpose. He wants to show his, you know, his miracle because this is going to be, you know, talking about the God, Jesus resurrecting in the future, like a little bit later. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen a little after that. He's the resurrection. And he wanted to show the power of the resurrection. He did, he did again with the, the daughter of Jairus. Because, you know, the daughter of Jairus, she died. And then Jesus said to them, everybody, you know, they was crying in the place. I said, everybody leave because she is sleeping. He knew she's going to resurrect. God's going to wake her up. And that same thing happening here with Lazarus. So, and then two days later, Jesus heard about it. Jesus came to the city. And then Martha, what Martha did? She ran. She went to see Jesus. And uh, look what Mary did. She, Mary, is still sat in the house. We're going to see at least two situations that about Mary. The one, I, I, I might I might give a spoiling already. But uh, the one it's when Jesus go in the Martha's and Mary's house. And Martha, you know, it's working. She's preparing, you know, like imagine if you have in your house a couple of people come. And then you have to, oh, my God, I have to do some cakes. I have to do this or that. And Martha was there. And Mary, she was sad. She was like, Jesus, tell me what's going on. Oh, this. Oh, wow. And then Martha was like, Jesus, you don't see this woman there. She never come to help me. You know, she was like, what about the materials and stuff? And Jesus said to him, to her, she chose the best part. Where is, what is the best part? Remember the verse we did, we, the first verse we read? This is my loved son. Listen to him. So she was doing that. She was listening to Jesus. And Martha worrying about the material stuff and the second the second time that i see mary loving jesus worshiping it's when she broke a vase with a very expensive perfume and she broke that vase on jesus feet and uh you know she was worshiping this is kind uh 
this is kind of like a, a, a representation when Jesus, Jesus is going to die and she was like already make a perform. You know, they usually, back there, they put the perform in the body, you know, uh, when someone died. This was a kind of illustration, but I don't want to go deep that. I just want to show you about Mary and Martha. How Martha was so focusing in material things, anxieties, and how Mary, all the time, was found worshiping God. So, Mary is still sat in the house. She was like, I know that my Redeemer lives. You know, when it's hard. Her brother has died. But, uh, you know, I'm resting. Jesus is coming. Eventually, he's going to come. I'm going to wait. But Martha, oh, okay, look, let's see the next one. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then Martha said, if you were here, if you had been here, my brother would, would, would not have died. So she was like, you don't love my brother. You know, why you're not here when I need? Have this happen with you when something wrong happening? I was telling to the Brazilian people, I say, you know, look like Jesus went to the oven. Oh, it's burning the cooks. I need to go to take the cook from the oven. And they, oh, oh, I didn't see you, you fall. <laughs> it's not like this. Everything had God has a control in his hands. It's never too late. It's never too late. You know, if you're passing on, on, on a trials or whatever you're passing through, realize that it's better if you sit with God and rest instead to be worried. Because what can you do? Can you make yourself grow more in your stature or is short? Can you change your hair with using colors? <laughs> we can't, right? He has the power and we need to realize it. So... Let's go to the next, John, uh, John 1, 22, right? Even now. 11, 22. Yeah, John 11, 22. Even yeah. now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Martha come and preach to Jesus, okay? You know, even now I know that whatever you ask to God, God will give to you. You know that, okay? So, she was already like telling Jesus what he, what he can do. And sometimes we're like that. God, you know. You know that need to be done. You know that, you know. But, but I know you have the, you know. He's the one who knows the time, the exactly time. She's, faith, she's trying to show faith. The next one, 23, please. Then when Mary was come when Jesus, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been there, my brother had not died. And now it's amazing because after that, Martha went to say to Mary, Jesus is calling you. Jesus even say anything. Jesus is calling you to Mary. She was in a house, you know, with some Jews that came to cry with her about her lost. And she went to Jesus. You see the first thing she did? She fell down at his feet. Worshipping. That teach me and you that when you see bad situations in our life, the first thing we should do is worshipping God. God, I don't know why this is going on in my life, but I know you have a control of everything. Even when I try so hard, right, you try, it's not working. You know the best thing to do, brothers and sisters? Go down, fell down, and worship, and worship. And she said, even without being there, she said the same thing. If you had this been here, my brother had not died. Because I know, Jesus, you have so much power that if you were here, your power would not let him die. But, you know, you know the, the, same, the same thing, but uh, the different ways? 
when you found out you show like humbly before God the next one John 11:38 Jesus therefore again being deeply moved within came to the tomb now it was a cave and the stone was lying against it There is one day that Jesus came to the Pharisees and say to them, I forget the words in English, but uh, it's the way that they say, you guys are like a painted cave. So you know the scarf when someone died? It's a scarf, right? When someone died and go under the earth and Jesus was saying to them you are like this scarf painted so beautiful for outside but inside there is death huh? yeah tombs how you say say it again white washed tombs you guys look so beautiful. You preach the word so beautifully. You know about God so beautifully. But inside of you, that is death. It's the same thing. And sometimes we all have a tomb. And that Jesus is going there. He said, Jesus therefore again being deeply. He always go deeply because in our hearts, there is some draws that we will tell to this guy who wants to go in. We say to him, we, you don't go there because that's painful. That's something happening with my life, and I don't want to touch on that. But I, that is exactly where God want to go, where Jesus wants to go, to heal. You know when you have uh, a cut and inflammed, you keep putting bondage on that, but you see the say this in the mic but you see the inflammation and you try put the band-aid on that and uh, Jesus is saying I want to go you know the doctor come to the ca child mom they gonna do injection in me they gonna use the syringe in me when you go to the doctor no everything will be okay you know uh, and then we go to the doctor and then he say yeah we need to put anesthesia on that okay I need to cut and I need to take that Take from, you're going to take antibiotic, you're going to be healed again. But uh, instead of that, why do we say, no, I don't go to the doctor. I'm going to keep this here. Put band-aid on it. I'm going to keep it. But uh, God, he wants to go in that cave. He wants. He wants us to take everything. That's why the title is free, free of myself. Because I want to take him, I don't want to take him care of the control anymore. I want to be free. Jesus, I give the will to you. I give the directions for you. I want to give the drive seat for you. You drive my life. I don't want to drive anymore. Because every time I drive, I don't want to go deep. I don't want you taking care of my hurts. I don't want you taking care of anything in my life. I want to take care because it's too painful. But Jesus is telling you this. I want to touch in there. I have love and I will heal you i want to heal from inside what jesus was telling to that guys to to the pharisees is you guys from outside of that tomb it's painful it's beautiful it's white but uh, that is something i want to treat inside of you because inside you death inside there's corruption stinks and pastor kelly always says you know why the body dead body stinks because the body is dead. He needs life. And Jesus is the life. And we're going to see. You can go to the next, please. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. This is amazing because... Lazarus was brother of Martha and Mary. 
I don't think it, nobody else could go and open that, take the stone from the cave. You know, like, if something needs to be done with the dead people, need to be, who is going to take, in, you know, is the family. And I think Jesus was exactly in talk with Martha. You know, uh, take the stone away. We were talking about, can you go up once? You see, tomb uh, and the stone was lying against it. That is a stone, covered it. The next one down, please. And Jesus said to them, take the stone. Jesus has the power. I'm going to tell you this. When Jesus resurrected, who took the stone? He did. He did. He said, I may open the hard way. I'm going to do the, hard, the hardest. This stone is too heavy. I'm going to take care of it. When Mary and the woman came to Jesus' tomb, there is no stone anymore. It was opened. The stone was run away. But uh, for us, since now we have the will to choose, he's saying for me, for you. What do you want to do? You want to be free of yourself? If you open the door as this guy was open to get inside, because it's only from inside we do it. If you take the stone that is in your tomb, as in your heart, I will make something, a miracle. I want to make whatever is death inside of you, I don't want to make this resurrected. But uh, it needs to be opened. We need to realize that we need to look to Jesus. We need to hear the voice of Jesus. We can keep the, our whole, whole life. I was talking to them on Friday night, and I said to them, have you ever realized that why do you live? you born, you, you know, you become a child, and then you grow, you marriage, you have kids, you grow a little more, and then you get older, and then you die. For what? For work? That is a purpose of your life on this earth. Everyone has a purpose. And it's not about you. It's about the design that he's made exactly for you only. Nobody else has. You are special because he did you and took the, the form and threw away. You are the only one. You are special. And Jesus loves you. And I, even in whatever pass in your life and the past, don't worry how you started. You have to worry how it's going to finish. It's not about the race. It's not about who's going to be the first one. It's going to be who passed the line. You know what I mean? And it's always good when we are together. Because maybe you can go, you alone, you can go fast. But uh, you might not finish the line. But uh, when you have people around us, one fall, the Bible say, be two, because if one fall, the other one helps. Come on, wake up. We go together. That's why we are here as a fellowship, as a church. Because we want to help each other. I'm weak. I'm going to pray for you. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm feeling sad. I'm going to pray for you. We pray. Ah, oh, I lost my job. We're going to pray. God has something better for you. God has, ah, oh, I'm feeling that we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. He's the one who is taking care. But uh, Martha comes again. She already tell, told Jesus, if you want, you pray to God and he's going to heal you. But now she's seeing, she's not looking the word of Jesus. She's looking what? What is inside. She's looking the problem. She said, it stinks. It's, that is a bad order, however. It's four days. Jesus is not saying, come on. I'm not looking at the, the, how is the size of your problem. I'm looking what I'm going to do. Because I have the power. I have the power. And he's telling me and you, I have the power. You want to listen to me? Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
And Jesus tell me and you, and many times we do the same way. Jesus, I think it's too late. Jesus, look at that. I think it's, it, it, I don't think so. But we look with these eyes. We need to look with Jesus' eyes. And he already told me and you, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And I tell you, church, today, did I told you already? If you believe, believe in what? In your strength? Believe in your knowledge? No, believe in him. Because God say, listen to my loved son, to my beloved. He's the one. He's the one we need to follow. Yeah, let's go to the next. When Jesus said this, Jesus called it aloud in a loud voice saying, Lazarus, come out. The beautiful thing is, first thing Martha was like, oh, but it's a stink, it's a, very, a bad odor. But Jesus said to her, did I told you? You want to still keep in look at the size of the problem? Or you want to listen to my voice and take the stone out? Even complaining, she did. And look what happened. Jesus called, you know, Jesus did a pray. Jesus, after prayed, Jesus said, Lazaro, come out. Lazaro, wake up. Whatever you're passing through in your life, God is resurrecting this faith maybe you lost. You know, in faith in Jesus, the hope maybe you lost. And Jesus, when you open, you, when you take the obstacle off the way between you and God, when you open the door for him, he comes and cry and say, Lazarus, come out. Healing, be healed. In the name of Jesus, if it's sentimental, whatever you're passing, Jesus wants to make your life new again and wake you up. Hallelujah. You go to the next. The hour is coming, now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will live. This is amazing, and I see this on these days today. The hour is coming, and now is, when the death the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those, and those who hear will, li will live. We see a lot of dead people around us. And uh, I'm telling you this, brothers and sisters, don't worry. Don't worry if you don't, if you don't think you're faithful. Don't worry. It's not about you. It's about the Word of God. We need to, re you know, we need to realize that. So one of the girls, uh, you know, the sister come to our church. She said, oh, I keep sending invitation for them to come. I say, keep going. If, even if they don't keep going. Pastor Kelly was saying he, for years he was sending messages to a couple of people. And then eventually someone came to him and said, you know what, Pastor Kelly? I never said that to you, but I always receive your messages and a lot of times was a good message for my heart even when i text you back to say thank you but now i'm coming back you know after years you send me i thank you so much for all the words you've sent to me you know i'm doing this every week i put the uh, the flyer of the brazilian you know i put the brazilian the address here and i put a song in portuguese and i send it out so they see the the fly with the the church name and everything, and they listen to the songs. You know, they keep keeping the listening four minute songs. I don't mind. Even if they don't come, they's gonna listen, and the seed is being dropped in their heart. And God's gonna, you know, He gonna know. And you know, that is people dead around us, and uh, we just need to speak the word. He's gonna do it. Next. The dead man came out, and his hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes. So when we hear the voice of Jesus, we see the miracle. <laughs> he came out. So the next. Everyone was thirsty. Come to the water. Jesus said the same verse almost um, in John, 
Yeah, I don't know if he's, he's going to be there, but I, Jesus said the same thing. If you are thirst, come to me. I have the water. It's gonna, if you are thirst, I have the water, or a, water of, uh, the living water. The next, uh, Isaiah 55 and 2. Why do you spend your money for which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. I love this verse because he said, listen diligent to me and eat what is good. Have you realized that what is good, to eat what is good, it's when you listen the word of God. Every time we listen the word, we, it's, we are like eating the good food and delight yourself in rich food. The word of God is rich and it's going to fill you up. Amen. The next. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria, or Samaria and uh, to the end of the earth. It's amazing how the things is going to be is starting. He says, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, our house first, okay? Everything starts in the house. Before I was trying to make the church important, and Jesus was going back to the beginning. It's in your house. In your house, Jerusalem, and then Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Everything starts in me and you. We cannot start in anybody else, in the people's house. This is going to start in me and you. And uh, I want to yeah, go to the next. I don't know if the picture comes first. Yeah, read this, and then I have a picture to show you. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but where but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Okay. So I want you to put the next, it's supposed to be a picture, I think. Okay. I think everyone, everyone already see this in the school, right? Okay. I'm going to ask you this for you. Today, you know, we are receiving texts. Do you receive in text when it's going to be a big storm or rain? Do you? Everyone receives, right? Uh, now, do you receive text when saying, we're going to have evaporation today? Everyone receives text about this? No? Me neither. But because I'm not receiving text, that's why it's not happening. It's happening. You agree with me? Okay. I want you to think on this. So, we see the rain coming down, but we don't see the evaporation going up. But it's happening. Go back to the verse. Up, por favor. Now read again, por favor. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but where watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper the thing whereto I sent it. Okay, can you put it back to the image again? I want you to go home, think on this picture. The rain, the precipitation, is the word of God. The Bible say, as the rain's coming down, as the snow is coming down, and don't go back to God without making the purpose, water the earth, 
and even say grow the fruits in everything he never it's the same thing my words will not come back to me avoid in another ways we don't have we don't see the evaporation right we don't see it that doesn't mean that's not happening and i want to tell you this just focus in hear the voice of jesus christ whatever he says about you that's the most important whatever god saying to you to say to the others say you speak to the life you speak the word of god whatever god say about you this is happening and we know we see the words many times we pray for healing we don't see healing many times we pray for someone that is lost and we don't see they coming back to church right many times we are in the streets talking about jesus many times we send the message to the world that we don't see but that doesn't mean it's not happening as the, the bible say as the rain is coming down as the snow is coming down and don't go back to up as we know that by the evaporation is going up it's happening we don't see it we don't we don't have to see it but it's happening the evaporation is happening the same way the word of god will not go back to him avoid keep going brothers and sisters keep in speaking let jesus let, let you free from yourself let jesus be your free it's not by what you think about you i'm so sinful i'm so i'm so weak i'm so this or that it's not about you anymore it's about jesus christ that god say listen to my beloved son listen to my beloved son it's not about your sin it's about my grace and keep going that's why pastor kelly keeps sending the message a lot of time people don't send the message back to him saying thank you pastor for the message many times he doesn't receive and the, even that he keeping doing he keeping we were in having brazilian service with two people sometimes one day nobody came but we were here and i know it's not about i i just need to listen what is the message for me come open the church sing to me do the service that do the service if someone come they're gonna listen if someone doesn't come I, I'm gonna preach into my family. I don't care about it. We just listen the message. The, what God told you. What have God told you to do? Keep doing. Don't look back. Don't look your past. Don't look if you're so weak. If you don't, you can do it. Man, it's happening. The world, it's happening. God said, and never, never will go back to Him. Avoid. Take this with you. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about our Father. And He has the plan of salvation for me and for you. Let us to be free from our desires. To be free from what we think we should do it. It's about what He did at the cross. And He had the final word for me and for you. He has. And you just need to come and open a space. He want to go inside. He want to treat you or whatever you have. Let him do it. He's a doctor. He knows everything. And may God bless you in the name of Jesus. I love this. I, when I saw this, I said, we need to have this. We need to see this. I never received a text saying we're going to have evaporation today. That means it's working. You remember the song? It's working. God still works. You know, one day the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, You work on Saturday. We cannot do anything on Saturdays. And the My father still works. He never stops works. Why do you want to stop work on Saturday? Come on. In the name of Jesus. Receive the grace of Jesus. It's not about you. It's about him. Amen. Let's sing our last song and we go. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land.
we thank you I don't know if someone here is having some you know leading our prayers 
we're going to pray for you right now. And I want to tell you, if you are listening to this online, if you still didn't receive Jesus Christ, you, the only thing you need to say is, Jesus, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I believe that you are the one who died at the cross to save me. And I ask you right now, repeat with me, just say, I ask you right now, Jesus, I accept you. I want you to come in my heart. I want to I wanna take this stone out. I don't want to guide my life anymore. I want you guide my life. I want to have you, Jesus, in my heart. Write my name at the book of life right now. I don't want to be yours. It's not about me anymore, but it's about you, Jesus. Help us, Jesus Christ, to take the stones out. Help us to not look to our knowledge or whatever we think we can do. Because it, you has the control of everything. And we surrender to you, Jesus Christ. You are the one who set us free. Set us free, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, everyone. You guys have a blessed week. That the Holy Spirit can continue to guide you wherever you're going through. Never stops. Remember, His Word is reigning in your life. We don't see evaporation, but it's happening. It's happening. Eventually, you're going to see the soil, and you're going to see the fruits of years, that plantation, you know, of hard work. But I keep just listening to the Father. Listen to my son. God bless you, everyone.